I've been living in Australia for almost two years now. Wow. And even though my visa is still valid until August next year, and I can make it a third year, I'm not sure if I want to stay that long. And it has a lot to do with my passion for language learning. <laughs> in fact, that's the only reason. <laughs> though I have been traveling around a lot and I lived for a long time in Sydney, in Adelaide and now here in Brisbane and I've seen so many beautiful landscapes, it would be still arrogant to say I have seen Australia already. Australia is such a huge continent, I probably have not even seen 1% and I still would like to visit Tasmania, I would like to go to Western Australia, I want to see the Outback, the Ayers Rock, I want to go to Northern Territory, but it feels like, and I have felt that in the last months, and recently very very strongly that it's time for the next step it's time to start the next chapter the best way to describe my current feeling is a german word which is durchgespielt it does not really translate into english but it is used if you played through a video game so you played it to the end you finished all levels after that doesn't really make sense to play that game you just it's not fun anymore because you know everything and you only play it to kill time and this is what it feels like to me right now being in australia is just like a waste of time a waste of my young years which i should start investing into that next chapter as i said before i don't want to sound so arrogant saying i have seen everything but it feels like i fully got used to the aussie lifestyle i remember when i just came to australia literally the first three four five months were like whoa 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 I couldn't realize that I've finally been here because it was a dream of mine since I was in class 9 that I want to go to Australia. But now after almost two years, I got used to it so much as if I have never been in Germany for the first 19 years of my life. It, always, it feels like as if I've always been here because I learned the language up to fluency. There is no language barrier whatsoever anymore two years ago was different. I just got used to that Aussie lifestyle so much already. I know all the idioms and the slang. I know the character traits of Australians that are not very reliable or easygoing as they would say. Just everything, the way you greet each other. Hey, good I might, how's it going? Yeah, not too bad yourself. Like, I got used to it so much already. I just finished high school in 2022 and in the same year I came here to Australia. And therefore I don't have any qualifications or no apprenticeship or anything. So the only way of making good money here in Australia was to work in the construction industry. And this is what I've been doing for almost the past two years. I've been working at so many different sites with so many different people and for so many different bosses. And this is how I mostly learned about the way Australians live. Though I don't want to complain about my job, of course it is physically very demanding and exhausting and I absolutely hate it. I don't want to complain because I'm, I don't want to sound ungrateful. I am extremely grateful for that lifestyle I can have right now as a young adult and I'm super grateful for the very good working position I have right now which is super flexible and I can really save up a big amount of money every week. The work atmosphere with the colleagues is mostly going well. I also don't work too much at the moment because three, four, five months ago I really worked my head off. There was, there was no private personal life left, it was just overtime every day. But now I'm super happy that I can have this 40 hour a week job. And yet, I feel more and more that I am just not made for this. At times I'm doing my work and I think like, what the hell am I doing here? I'm someone who works with his head. I'm more like an intellectual guy. I want to study medicine in the future. And I'm studying languages in my free time. But here I am working with my hands, making myself dirty and working my ass off so that at the end of the working day my bones hurt and I you know just waste my physical energy and then I think what am I doing here I feel like I'm a rabbit okay I'm a rabbit who is meant to eat grass and carrots but right now I'm trying to hunt mice like I'm a, I'm trying to be a cat but I'm not a cat I'm like in the wrong field in the wrong industry I should just go back to my grass and eat carrots like <laughs> this is the best way to describe my position right now I'm doing something which is just not me just a bit more than a year ago I started learning Chinese and ever since everything has changed I already discovered that I have like a gift for 
language learning because I'm like very analytic and I love details and I really wanted to improve my English and now at a level where I'm happy with my English it's still not native like and probably will never be but it's good enough and I wanted to have like that next challenge that next goal and then I started learning Chinese and ever since I don't know why I literally God knows I'm not lying studied every single day there is not a single day where I take a day off I'm like David Gorman saying I don't take any days off. <laughs> I don't know the reason, but I have such a fascination and obsession about Chinese culture, Chinese food, Chinese people, Chinese girls. <laughs> and just the language itself and just talking about language learning. And this is what I'm doing in my free time. Plus, I love photography and videography, editing videos. I've been doing that for a very long time in my life already. And recording videos, putting them out on the web about what fascinates me about how I learn. Uh, is also just like one of my biggest hobbies something I would love to do as a full-time job and yet I am having two jobs and one of the jobs is affecting the other one so another German word <laughs> let me introduce you to the word zweigleisig fahren it means you drive on two lanes or like more like train related you drive on two what do we call it Gleise. don't even know you drive on two tracks what to adopt a two-pronged approach, never heard that in. Anyway, I'm driving zweigleisig, that means I'm doing two things at the same time, working full-time on a construction job, which I absolutely hate, but also still do, because it's the best I can do, like, objectively right now, to save up lots of money. But also, there is that passion about language learning, about making videos about that, the desire to make that full-time. But working so hard really affects my passion, because I'm physically just extremely exhausted after work and therefore I use every free minute I have in my free time. I never go out, I don't have any friends that I meet in my private life. If I speak to someone, then only to Chinese people to learn and to develop my speaking skills. On working days I'm never available for anything because after work it's my time, I have to study Chinese and make videos because I have that dream. It's not like an obsession that I build my value through work. In our society, we're always like, oh, he's very busy. Looks like he's an important guy. Like, But if you're not busy, oh, you have nothing to do? It means you're unemployed or something? No. Being busy is not always cool. And having free time is not always boring. I wish that I would have more free time just to relax sometimes. But I'm working so hard right now because I have that dream. I want to switch from two tracks to one track which is everything around languages another crucial aspect to understand why i lost my grip or my beginner's fascination for australia is that i had lots of negative experiences and heaps of negative encounters especially in the city adelaide which in my opinion is just a cursed city i had so many weird things happen for example, my car broke down for which I saved up money for half a year. I worked my ass for five months and then this car unfortunately broke down, just the engine blew up. That was like my darkest day because I lost so much time and money because of that. More than that, I had lots of disputes and scandals happening and related to work and there was like a crazy guy who was threatening me and hunting me and just... I don't even want to think about these things, I just think like I feel safe right now, thank God, but I feel like I don't even want to be in a country with these people. Just knowing that I had these very negative encounters and I'm still in the same country with those people makes me feel very weird and all I want is to go to another country and start over somewhere where nobody knows me, where I don't know anyone and where I can just start fresh. It was really a pity because up to that time Australia was just very, very beautiful but somehow these experiences really spoiled my stay here in Australia. In previous videos, I probably have shared my plans already of going to China next year, but the more I watch Chinese videos just to get comprehensible input or vlogs to see how it is traveling in China, the more I speak to my Chinese friends, the more I have that strong desire, I have to go ASAP. <laughs> it's so difficult to me to watch these Chinese videos because sometimes I'm watching them and I'm like, I have to book a flight right now <laughs> because I want to go so much. 
However, I don't want to decide things too quickly. I think it is never wise to decide from an effect, from an emotion. Just you have a quick desire and you just quickly act according to it. I think through and I sleep many, many nights over it. I also want to combine that dream of going to China with my language learning journey. And this is basically why I started this YouTube channel here, because indeed, I don't need to lie about it. I see it as a business. I see it as a potential source of income. My vision is that after leaving Australia, I can do that full time. I can help people with getting to fluency. I can maybe help people starting uh, to learn Chinese, and help people with German. My dream is not to be rich. I just want to have enough money that I can live on it and continue traveling at the same time, that I'm not bound to one place like I've been in the last two years. I always had to stay in one city and work there. But if I can earn money with languages, with making videos and teaching languages, then I'm super flexible. I can always move from one place to another. And this is my dream. I just want to have enough for surviving, <laughs> basically. I'm really very simple, I don't need much. And uh, recently I've been watching many, many videos about how life is in Thailand. Even this morning I watched another video of how much a condo costs in Malaysia, because I want to go to a country where it's cheap to live, like Thailand, and just stay there maybe for three months, lock myself in the room and work full time on that language learning thing. So what you see here on YouTube is just the beginning. I am planning to open up a website where I provide like one-to-one face-to-face classes um, and maybe even group classes. I'm planning to start a podcast. I'm planning to improve my videos, my editing skills, just everything I do on Instagram, on TikTok, and just want to put my full energy into that. But I cannot do it at the moment because I don't have the right headspace. I cannot do creative stuff like watching tutorials about DaVinci Resolve, how to improve my editing skills and stuff because I'm just working a physical job. And it's just not possible to lean myself 100% into that uh, dream I have becoming like an online tutor. And so right now I'm just saving up money here in Australia and then I finally want to get out of here. I want to go to Thailand or Malaysia, some Asian country where it's cheap to live. Just stay in my room most of the time. I really don't need much. Many people make the mistake that in these countries they spend lots of money. Everything is cheap, but you spend more and then the volume is just bigger. And they go partying, they drink a lot, they spend $400 on weed. And I don't have any of that. I don't go partying, I'm not interested in meeting people, I don't drink. And so I just have very, very basic expenses. I just want to stay in my room, work, improve my uh, language learning game, my YouTube game, my editing style, everything. Just hit the gym, go swimming every now and then, go to church on Sunday, and that's it. I really don't need much. You know, some people out there say, this is your side to go all in, and you have to risk it. Like, here on that side, you must do what you love, yes. But it's not always wise to go all in. And I have that fight between my heart and my mind right now, because with my heart, I just want to do that language learning thing so much and start offering group classes or uh, online classes. But on the other hand side, I know I still have to save up a bit of money because there is always a certain risk coming with it. So just going all in is not always the best option. Always take it slow. Alles mit der Ruhe. <laughs> yeah, and that was basically it. I just wanted to tell you my inner thoughts right now, what I contemplate on so, so much. The more days pass, the more I realize I have to start that next chapter. I have to do my own business. I have to make that language learning thing, that language teaching thing, a full-time job. Um, back in Germany, I've been doing lots of online tutoring already in the subject of Latin, and it worked very, very well. And I already made good money with that. If I would just do it full-time, I was doing it like nearby, um, I could already live from it. So it's definitely possible. I believe in this dream, and I want to let it come, and I want to let it come true. And for now, the focus is just going to work, slaving away and not losing that excitement that I have. And this is what I'm really scared about. I don't want to become blunt. Like, honestly, like, I'm not bashing all my colleagues or anything, but if you work on a construction site where all the people dropped out of school and just work to have an apprenticeship, the niveau is pretty low. And I'm maybe the only one who has like these high ambitions with language learning and like improving intellectually and everything. But if no one else around you 
has that same mindset that drags you down. It makes you blunt. And I don't want to be that. I'm scared that I will lose that excitement for language learning and for that whole language learning bubble, lingua holic, so to say. So I really have to keep my head up and stay motivated, keep grinding, even if it's hard, do two things at the same time. And God willing, in maybe four, five, six months, I thought to stay in Australia till the end of this year tops. I don't really want to stay too long because I just have to have to do that next step, have to walk that next step. So I probably, let's say less than half a year, I'll finally be able to move to a country where it's cheap to live. And then I make everything around language learning as a full-time job. And then I can finally go to China and realize my dream of yeah, living in China and bringing my Chinese up to fluency. And my plans are of course also to teach English and German in China as well. All right. That's basically it was just a bit of a real talk. Something I wanted to say that making these kind of videos here is really like my heart. <laughs> All right, I'll catch you next time. Auf Wiedersehen, bye bye, tschüss, das Vidania, Wally, Zeitzehn.